Hello and welcome to celloprofessor.com. This is a video on the basic bow hold of the cello. In other words, how to introduce the bow hold to uh, very beginners. Here's, uh, here's one way to do it in the classroom and even uh, in private teaching. I like to take a dry erase marker because it comes off pretty easily. And I'm going to put a couple marks on my hand here and I'm gonna show you in just a moment where that is. All right. So let me go over to the camera and show you here. As you can see, uh, I made two marks on my fingers on the crease there at the, after the top digit of the hand. All right. Why would I do that? And again, dry erase markers, many applications. Why would I do that? Well, it's a very convenient starting point uh, to teach where the bow makes contact with the fingers. But here's what I like to start with first. You can take either a pencil, or as uh, Gerald Fishbach recommends, a straw. All right, because a straw helps the student realize that it's a light touch. If you squeeze it, it bends, All right? But you can do either, okay? I'm gonna use the pencil for now. So there you are with the straw if you prefer that. So what you can do is just have the student, okay? Put the palm up lay the pencil across both creases you don't have to mark their hand hand but you just mark yours to show them where it is bend the thumb bend the, i'm a big advocate of bending the thumb <laughs> all right the thumb muscle stays a lot more relaxed when it's bent okay bend the thumb and flip it over voila all right a basic bow hold on the pencil okay again mark the hands mark the creases so you can show you can literally run around the class and she uh, of cellists all right and you can quick show them cellos here you go here's where you put the bow all right and if you want for the violin you could use a different color and mark different parts of the finger like you put it on the tip of the pinky and you could put it a little higher on this finger okay the group maybe you use green or red or something i don't know but we're talking cello right now. Lay it across the two creases, bend the thumb, flip it over, and we have a basic bow hold. Now what you can do is what I call the string trek docking. String trek from Star Trek, okay? So this is the Starship Enterprise. This is the space pod, okay? So what you do, shake out the hand. Okay, shake it out. This is to help the students find the bow hold coming from above. So you shake out the hand and bend the thumb. This is the bow hold, okay? This is it, okay? I'll, I'll prove it to you. If I take my own bow, shake out my hand, bend the thumb, and I bring it in, there. See, okay? So that's what I tell them. Next, shake it out, bend the thumb, and then the space pod lands on the Starship Enterprise, and feel free to do sound effects at this time. <laughs> Land on the two creases, thumb across, all right, from the second finger. Those were the hydraulics, in case you were wondering. So you can have fun with this. Beginning bow hold is fun, okay? All right, so again, Starship Enterprise, shake out the hands. What happens a lot of times is this. No, 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 don't do that. As you're coming in, like, things get all contorted. You know, no, 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 no. You just keep it like this. Bend the thumb, just leave it. All right, bring it in. And then just kind of relax. You want to be a little bit on top of the of the stick. We have some other exercises coming up for that too. Okay, and then you bend your thumb. You put it right across. All right. So because obviously you're not going to find your regular bowl hold like this. It's a little trickier this way, right? I mean, you can do it. That's even confusing to me. Okay. <laughs> so so again, like that with the sound effects. Now I found a lot of younger kids. They don't know what Star Trek is. Uh, it seems weird if you're a little older, so you're gonna have to do Star Wars, but then you can't use the fancy term string trek. So I don't know. You can just say, this is Han Solo's spacecraft, whatever it is, and this is Princess Leia's uh, space pod or Luke Skywalker's space pod coming in to the tractor beam, pulling it in. Okay, good. Now, a couple things you can do with this pencil now is you know, you don't want the thumb all stiff and the fingers all stiff when you do it. So bring it in, land right on those creases, and just kind of practice resting their hand on the pencil as they hold it up with this hand. 
All right, they can do the, look at that, the sea snake dance. Yeah, the sea snake, all right? Okay, all right, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Gerald Fishbach has the, the monkey hang, right? He uses a bow though, but you can do it with the pencil. See, you can do the monkey hang. All right, all right. Or Tarzan, your Tarzan in the jungle hanging. Okay, those are a couple things. Because you don't want to be straight and stiff. It has to have a sense in which you're resting on top. So I kind of like these sorts of exercises where you feel like you're hanging and then bring the thumb in. Okay, then what's next? Okay, well, once you have that, okay, now you can take your bow. And I'm, I'm a big fan of having young, particularly young, beginning cellists choke up on the bow. All right, why? Because... We're working against gravity on cello and gravity wants to pull the tip down and it's so common to see the steak knife grip, right? You guys heard of the steak knife grip? My teacher used to call it the steak knife grip. It's when you over supinate. This way, this is supinating by the way, when you turn your hand this way. All right, it's like this, kids hold it like this. All right, it's like they're making a trip to Ponderosa. If you're a vegetarian, it's broccoli grip, okay? Or cauliflower grip, or maybe some sort of big carrot, okay? There's that. Now, <clears throat> by moving it up here, closer to the balance point, some, some teachers like to go all the way up to the balance point. All right, so you could do it there. That's also a possibility. I don't know, I've been teaching a third grader and he was fine back here. So if it's still a problem, I guess you can shift it up. I mean, the, if you're up closer to the balance point, just the whole bow feels lighter. You know, and it's just, I think it helps prevent squeezing and everything. and prevents stagnant, it prevents so many things. And guess what? It feels just like the pencil, right? I mean, they're not that different in thickness. The pencil's a little thinner. So once you practice your, your, your string track or your Star Wars Luke Skywalker Princess Leia landing on Han Solo's spaceship, it's not a hard transition to hear, right? I mean, it feels very much the same. Shake out the hand, bend the thumb, Aim for the creases, which kind of go a bit on top. All right, and you can practice all kinds of things with this. <laughs> all right, okay. So that's what I suggest, and just let them stay there for a while, and then gradually move them down, all right? Once they get used to it. Now, in the meantime, what you can do is help them strengthen the back of the hand, the two weak, the, the two weak fingers, all right? It's pinky finger. If it's really weak, and it's so often so weak with a lot of people, if they're not used to, you know, if they don't play the cello or something, um, that can be difficult to hold the bow back here because especially when you're playing quietly, you actually use that back of the hand to keep the tip up, right? And if it's not strong with young players, you go right into that broccoli grip, right into the steak knife grip. It's a family time at Ponderosa. Okay, so what you do is take this piece of paper, Go in the middle, and you're gonna crumple the paper only using these two fingers in your thumb. All right? Don't use one and two. Keep the peace sign. Keep the peace sign because guess what? If you play the strings, you're basically a hippie. All right? Give me the peace sign while you're doing this. No fair using one and two. All right. There we are. Crumple it up. Yeah, that's hard at first. Okay? And so in the meantime, while your cellists have their bow choked up, you can be strengthening the back of the hand that way. And if you want to get really hardcore about it, you can get a whole sheet of newspaper. For your young, young people out there, newspapers were things delivered to your door, okay, made of paper and ink. Yeah. Okay, so now um, there's some other things you can do to be strengthening the back of the hand to prepare the student to move back here. So, you know, string track it. Okay. Don't forget the All right, now, uh, what I like to do is just do some things like this. Like, just get used to them starting to move it around. See, you're gonna be working that pinky. Work that pinky. You can do circles, all right, like this. Okay, see that pinky? It's gotta do stuff. You see it moving? Yeah, it's gotta do stuff. And um, that's gonna be help strengthening. Now, if you wanna get really, take it to the next level, alphabet, A, B. Now, you cannot move your wrist. Don't move your wrist, only your fingers. So once they get used to doing various like circles and 
vertical lines and up and down like this, okay, you can move into the, the alphabet, A, capital letters, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. See, I mean, I can feel it working too. Get that, get that a little bit built up back there. Okay, it's gonna help a lot for those young cellists, okay? Because remember, young cellist hands, they're basically amoebas, all right? They're basically amoeba hands, all right? They're like formless. They're like this, or, you know, there's no form. They just, oh, no, 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 they gotta have some kind of form, <laughs> you know? So, and part of it is the fingers weak in the back and this knuckle collapses here. You know what I mean? It's just weak. So we gotta get that strong. We gotta battle against the amoeba hand. All right. With adult students, beginners, it's the opposite. They're, they're rigid, see? It's not amoeba hand, it's Hoover Dam. This part here is so rigid there. It's like a dam, it blocks all that, but that's for another video, so. Okay, so after that, and as it strengthens, you can begin to test it, begin to test it. I mean, I'd leave it for a few months at least, and then maybe start to move it back, okay? Watching very carefully, okay? Until you make it all the way back. Now, once you get all the way back to the frog, I'd like to point out a couple things that often get overlooked with the bow. Now, there are different schools of thought on this, so this is the school of thought that I belong to, but, um, I like to point out to the student that there are ledges here on the the, the the bow, right? All kinds of ledges. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah. It's an octagon. <laughs> okay. Now, now, why is it that this bow, even though it's round up here, has an octagon down here? Why would they do ledges? Why not make it round? And a lot of students guess it. Well, it's easier to hold on to. It is, all right? One of those ledges, those ledges are there so your thumb can go on the le on the proper ledge to give you uh, a better hold and good leverage. Okay, so the ledge the thumb goes on to, here it is. Uh, if you look at this octagon, all right, you have a ledge on the top, you've got a ledge on the very side, you've got a ledge on the very bottom. The ledge the thumb goes on is not the one on the side, it's not the one on the bottom, it's the one in the middle. See, if you get close here, you can show the ledge. It's not the side ledge, it's not the bottom ledge, all right? It's in between, right there. That's the magic ledge. That's the magic ledge for the thumb, all right? It goes right there, all right? The thumbnail points to the tip, all right? Don't have the thumbnail pointing at you, all right? Thumbnail doesn't go like this. The thumb naturally points that direction. Naturally points that direction. So that's what we're gonna do. Points to the tip, all right? Thumb points to the tip of the bow, okay? At all times. And as Irene Sharp talks about in her video, it's like a shelf. That's how I like to think of it too. The thumb is like a shelf. It's basically like a fulcrum, similar to a fulcrum. Okay, all right, the second finger. I tell my beginning students when I move them back, thumb half on, half off the hair. So I'm of the touch the hair a little bit school of thought. <laughs> all right, uh, maybe even a little more on the hair than not on the hair, why? You can use your second finger to help out your first finger in transferring the power of the arm. That'll be another video. But that's what I show them, at least half on, half off, okay? So those are just some very basic things in the beginning. All right, for beginning bow hold on the cello, that's how I approach it, okay? And hopefully that is a help to some of you teachers out there and anybody else that may find it interesting. Okie dokie artichokies. All right. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Take care, everybody.